Well, 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 welcome back and shout out to my man Nublis over there for that beautiful introduction and my God, waking up for a very early, uh, very blizzardy, sun, uh, snowy Sunday morning over here in Helsinki, Finland. As always, wish you well, wish you the best, the best, the happiest of the happiest. Uh, and my God, we actually have some stuff happening in the overnight session, something that I've been looking for all week, finally going down. Unfortunately, I was asleep, so I wasn't really able to fully take advantage of it myself, but hopefully the people who have been tuning this content got the full, got got, uh, got that position. Um, if not, well, we'll get in the live stream right over here. Of course, this is not financial advice, not a financial advisor, just sharing exactly, you know, exactly what I've learned, exactly my exact experiences in these uh, in these exact sort of same situations. So over here on the daily, we'll start out with the higher time frame. And as it is Sunday, we will be going over some long term analysis as well. But to begin with the higher time frames right over here, the daily, I do look at this and I just want to point out once again that the daily, the higher time frames will lead you, will not lead you astray like the lower time frames, or they're less likely to. So if you feel like you're over trading, if you feel like you're getting hunted, if you feel like, if you feel like you're getting wicked, out understand that you know if you were just looking at the daily right over here uh the 10 simple moon average right over there you know has been holding this bitch down for the last you know half month or so uh going all the way back on over here yeah about two three weeks so you know you know yes while while yesterday did have a nice little pump up on extremely low volume by uh, by the way down over here it's just very indicative of a fucking hunt by the way uh you know the 10 simple still holding it down so if you do feel that way, maybe I suggest sticking to these higher time frames. Again, there's no dishonor in doing such. And I actually, and I had to make that same sort of uh, switch when I first came over to crypto. Now, in traditional markets, I actually only traded the five minute pretty much. And sometimes, and like if I was feeling crazy, I'd go over to the 15 minutes sometimes. But it was a whole different game. In cryptocurrency land, especially on a 24 7 market, there's a lot of, you know, <laughs> and especially in a very illiquid market, uh, the lower time frames just, you know, they, they can do all sorts of flighty and floaty stuff. But typically speaking, the price action will be respected at least on a daily and, and you know if even then a weekly a weekly is a weekly is really where the big trades are i mean that's how that's how really how i decided that bitcoin was no longer going parabolic at, at the beginning of 2018 when it basically put in a lower high on the week it's just, it's just that fucking simple so again it is not financial advice not a financial advisor but just sharing what's worked for me in the past um situations so yeah look at the 10 simple right over there coming in right around 3480 i mean price wicked up about three and a quarter bucks higher than that so just putting an order right over there would have been absolutely beautiful we got the same sort of a hunt or what looks to be the same sort of a hunt as this guy right over here this guy right over here and now this guy right over here all being be held in by the 10 simple and it's slowly but surely getting ground down more and more effectively you saw this first one over here giving it up on the second um on the second daily dildo this one over here just closing right below and this one over here you know shoving it back right back down same sort of situation again we have that overall consolidation area ish type of a vibe with the uh with the volume metrics right over here which tells me that this is very corrective in nature it is very mature we are getting very near this th this pattern being resolved but i actually got a i actually got a message last night which really um which really scared me and you know, it, it really shouldn't because this is one message out of like a million. But basically, someone was insinuating that I was um, that uh, th uh, that I was like that I was like trying to counter the market with my positions and stuff like that. But first things first, man, the the subscriber base on this channel is relatively small compared to someone who I mean, even even someone who has 100,000 subscribers, they're not moving the market. It's big market movers with, you know, half a billion billion plus in in in, in equity to trade. Now, not only that, but I really hope that, you know, when you're looking at a daily like this, when I say something like that, doesn't that doesn't mean necessarily right here, right now, today, it's about to explode. It, yes, it's very much nearing completion, but this has taken about two and a half months, sorry, going all the way back on over here to middle of November, middle of fucking November. So when I say that, relatively speaking, this could still take another, you know, couple weeks. That's what I feel a little bit more comfortable saying if you really wanted me to put a... A time frame on this anyways i probably shouldn't spend time you know speaking to this because this is just you know this is one message out of uh, you know out of just the millions i get per day and most people are usually really really appreciative and a lot of people seem to have actually got that position on this week on this wick over here so i should really be focusing on that and if you did uh, yeah i should really have a more positive message than that that's right um you know if you did take a if you did take a position off that fucking well done that was a phenomenal position and that was exactly what i was waiting for down over here on the lower time frames again i was asleep during the night but we spoke about this area right over here this area right over here that as long as bitcoin is be held in below it below this 34 or, uh, what was it, 3480 uh, area right over here, 
you know, I am still more aggressively bearish actually in the lower time frames. Again, with the caveat that yes, this can take some time. It can take some time. Markets take their time. Um, now for full disclosure and also of course, you know, it's it, it would be very silly of me to like be running against my positions because I quite literally show you my positions, my entries and all that. I'm just short. I'm still holding that 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 short from six three hundred as you can see. Been holding it for the last literally, you know, two and a half, almost three months now, I guess. Um, so again, you know, I, I you know, I, I hope that that shines through. I think it, I think it probably does for the for for the right type of person that's that's attracted to this channel. Again, the type of person that that's attracted to this channel is the kind of person who doesn't think in black and white, black or white. They can understand gray area technical analysis, and um, and and also just you know this this channel is about giving you the tools. I really want to connect with the kind of person that I felt like. I was when I first started because I felt like I got incredibly lucky by getting around, you know, some of the best traders and, and having a mentor who had been doing this for 40 years um, on the floor of New Stock Exchange Arca. Whereas, you know, I, I think some people just they want like the fucking spoon fed, you know, moon or doom, baby. We going up or we going down. And that's, you know, that's not what this channel is about. This is about real trading. This is about how to, you know, I'm share I'm sharing how I do this as a living. Um, so anyways, uh, you know, in the lower time frames right over here, we are actually in the process of technically speaking, forming a bear flag. You, you see this, uh, this upper resistance trend line right over there and this lower resistance trend line right over here. We had this drawn in yesterday, again, just filling it out. I do, I redo the charts every day fresh with you, just, you know, in case there's new people and they want to see how it's going down. Um, but, but yeah, you know, same sort of a thing going yesterday and still being beheld in by, by that area. Now back below the 21 exponential, we, st we should have the four hour Stokes hinting at a cross pretty damn soon. I believe that three hours have crossed down. Yep, they have crossed down and they have nosedived after that. Um, so yeah, you know, lower time frames never even I mean, the lower time frames even should have been telling you that this is, you know, this is that was just a hunt, just like this was over here, just like this was over here. Um, so again, I, I got actually got, you know, it's, it's so silly me to focus on the negative when there's so many people who reached out to me who were like, hey, man, it, you know, I got a position off that area that you spoke about. And now I'm in profit by like, I don't know, like fucking 50 bucks now. So, or sorry, 60 or 50, yeah, about 50 bucks. So not bad. Well done. Well fucking done. Um, now, and, and, but also, you know, give yourself some credit and look at this area right over here. Look at the volume characters of this. Again, we have that nice orderly consolidation area volume. So when this was, you know, pumping up yesterday, it was, yeah, you know, you, you always get a little bit antsy when price actions, you know, just pumped up what, like 40, 50 bucks in a span of a couple minutes, which I'm sure it happened in that. Um, but, uh, but when you look at this vibe right over here, look at the volume on this. Again, if you're in the technical analysis program, this is what I mean by, by, by looking at volume and understanding how that relates to price action. Just a beautiful follow up on this guy. And, uh, and essentially, you know, it's to me, this is still just in the context of a, of a rising channel bear flag, uh, more likely to break out to the downside doesn't mean it's always going to to, of course, again, remember the long, the, the non black and white thinking of technical analysis. Um, but, uh, but yeah, if it is a bear flag, then we can make a measure move off this and, uh, that'll be pointing all the way down. Well, let's just make the assumption it's going to be somewhere right around here. Let's go back to a four hours that where I made it. Yeah. Let's do it like right around there. Where would that be pointing down around to? Oh my God, it's 32, 20 ish area right over here, which basically is our prior low. Um, and you also notice that that actually does match up with this this symmetrical triangle that Bitcoin uh, made at the end of December, early January, which is still very much in play. Again, as long as Bitcoin is below the breakdown point right over here at 3850-ish area, that measure move is still very much in play. So I do like the confluence between these two. Again, just because we have two things pointing down there doesn't mean it's always going to get down there 100%. No, of course not. This is a, this statistical game, but overall, you know, putting the pieces together, it does look like it's being walked down. It's having that beautiful bear market walk down. I mean, it's essentially Bitcoin is just doing this all the way through. It's it's basically making bear flags all the way through, which is what a bear market typically does, right? You have this one right over here. Whoops, hey, get off there, you stupid trading view. You know, you have this one, this one, this one, and you know what? You actually even had one right over here. If you wanted to not look at this as a symmetrical triangle, you could look at this as a rising channel breakdown, rising channel breakdown, rising channel breakdown and are we going to do the same well well we'll just have to see uh but again you know um that is typically how bear markets go. Uh, you get that like nice orderly walk down in your consolidations, and then when it when it's you know ready to blow, it's uh, then we get the next move. Now, of course, if I do extend this out further, and we do extend this guy out further, well what what does it look like we are doing well this guy is just kind of governing our lower highs so even if bitcoin were to break up and of course remember i always want to offer up the other side because there is another side it's not black and white uh if bitcoin does get back above 3480 right over here well that 
I, I would certainly not want to be short if that happened, like if it closes above there. And when I say get above there, I mean closes above there. That's what I really mean by this. When you're talking about wicks, you're just going to get wicked out like a, on a stop hunt. And if you are getting, I mean, if you really are getting stop hunted by something like this, you're, you are over leveraged to be quite, to be, to, to put it quite frankly, you know, just friend to your friend, you're fucking over leveraged, man. Um, if you're like getting liquidated on a move like that, that is, that is absolutely insane. Um, but uh, but yeah, if, if if Bitcoin gets above this area and closes above this area, I would not want to be short, but I wouldn't necessarily want to be um, I wouldn't necessarily want to be long either. I really don't like being long. I'd want to be neutral in this area. If Bitcoin got above this area right over here, this area at thirty five thirty, uh, then yes, then maybe I might uh, maybe I'd consider be, uh, taking along because at that point in time, this would start to look like a bear trap, and I'd be and I'd be aiming my cannon somewhere right around you know thirty seven hundred, thirty seven fifty, thirty six fifty, somewhere right around here, maybe even you know. Again, the top of this uh, resistance trend line has been holding our lower highs all the way through. That would be coming in around 37.50. So, you know, right now I, I don't, you know, I, I'm not leaning towards that happening. But, hey, if, if Bitcoin did take out 35.30 over here, that's what I'd essentially be looking for. And, again, I'd, I'd be completely de-risk if we closed above 30, uh, 37.80, 37.70, whatever it is. Um, let's, put on, let's put a beautiful fib on this baby as well. And this uh, Fibonacci retracement should also line up with these with these areas. And, we're, yeah, we, get, we got the 618 right around that. 35, 30 area, and we're actually going to go through that in a second. We got the 786 right around our current lows right now, um, our local lows, I should say. And if that breaks down, well, which would also initiate the uh, the bear flag mesh move. Well, where do we? Where's the next kind of area to? Uh, down around here, around these 886, which Bitcoin does seem to love. So keep these in mind, um, and uh, you know, just just by looking at the fibs, we got we have, we have a very good idea of what the uh, bots and algos are doing. And the next piece of the puzzle is going to be the big solution in my opinion although you know of course until bitcoin actually formally breaks 3250 on a daily I, I hope i'm also very clear about me not being extremely like bearish looking for new lows again it's you know these these sorts of th these sorts of things are very delicate to relate because it's like yes i am bearish but there's there's a time and place to like actually have that position just like at 6000 you know it's bearish the whole way through but it wasn't until a 63 or 6400 rejection there and i then i took again the position that i show right over here which i've been showing for the last I don't know, fucking three months at 6,300 right over there. Um, anyways, uh, that and that position is not really, you know, for for the next drop, at least in my opinion, I would need to see a daily total close below 32.50. So for right here, right now, um, what we're looking at, the fibs are telling us something very interesting, and this is the next kind of piece of the puzzle, I suppose. And essentially, that you had this 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 nice local low being put in right here, currently the lows of the year, pump up all the way up over here. Okay, that's now we can put a, a retracement on it, pop back down to the 618, gets front ran. Where's it bought? Where's the algo target going to be? Right over here, right above the two. 336 uh, pops back down at 618 where's, where's algo target going to be we'll just walk it down one more 382 right over here then pop it right back down once again the 618 this is why it's called the golden pocket then where's the target going to be the 0.5 yes it's being walked down then pops back down to the 618 and fails it fails okay so 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 next tick being had and now we're down to the 786 however to me, if this is going to maintain the more bearish pressuring, the more bearish posturing, I do not want to see it get back above the 618. In fact, I want to see it fall below the 786 beforehand to, to, to give me full, to, to give me just a little bit more confidence that, that the bots and algos are really on the sell side and, uh, and walking this down. That would be the next step in this procedure, essentially. Um, now, of course, the 886 down around here is still very much intact, and you know it's, it's not going to be it's not going to be appropriate to really be taking big shorts, at least in my opinion, until that area breaks. But, but what I'd want to see if the if the bearish posture, it, what what the bearish posture will essentially look like, if it does play out, is we'll is we'll we'll break this the seven eight six before we break the six one eight, then we'll then uh, then we'll come back down the eight eight six and probably bounce back up to the seven eight six. We might bounce up to the 618 at that point, but those will highly likely be sells. I mean, unless if we just have a massive, massive fucking, you know, uh, counter run, um, which I don't think is very likely. And I'll actually present the reason why, again, with the overall context in mind that we're talking about price action that's happened over the last three fucking months. So when we go over here to the daily and again we go back and have that discussion on the volume of this you have that nice orderly drop off in volume and when it gets to the small pitter powder right over here it becomes more and more and more likely to actually break now again each and every one of these represents a day so this can take some time it can still take you know a couple weeks um 
but that's essentially what I'd be looking for. Uh, so again, that would be suggesting that a move is likely incoming sooner rather than later. And if we go back on over here to, you know, if we go over here to the four hour and we put on the good old uh, historical volatility index, uh, let's go to, there we go, uh, by my man, Bally Poor over there. Well, we can see that Bitcoin is, is at a very, 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 very low level right now. Whenever Bitcoin gets some of these low levels, it basically correlates with major moves. Now, when the when the volatility ranks get, get super high, that typically tells you that you're at a major inflection point, whereas the opposite is had when you are at a very low level, it's telling you that a big move is likely incoming. So let's just see what, what this move was right over here. Oh my God, was it the November breakdown at 6,000? Yes, it was. Uh, what about the time before that? Right over here when it was this low, that was your breakdown of 7,400 right over here. Then it was this low right over here. That was actually a nice pump. So again, it doesn't tell you direction, but it tells you a big move is likely coming. Then we have this guy right over here. This was the breakdown from 75 to when everyone was getting super bullish off the inverted Quasimodo motherfucker. Uh, then we had this getting super low right over here on the high of 10,000. Again, telling you that the big move is likely coming. Um, so multiple things suggesting that, you know, likely the move is incoming i'd say i'd say pretty comfortably probably in the next couple of weeks um and you know it will actually even go through some long-term analysis type things that, that that are even in that realm as well although uh more more speculative in that region but now that we've covered the lower time frames well actually let's we did we cover them fully okay we covered the four hour four hour adx dmi never even gave you a trend to the upside by the way um funnily enough uh four hour stokes are about 24 minutes and 25 seconds away from confirming down um, what about six hour, six hour? Did we give up the 21 last, last, last pounce? No, we did not. Uh, what about the eight hour? That's also going to be finishing the eight hours, clear rejection of the 21 as it stands. Eight hour still, still headed north though, funnily enough. Um, but, uh, ADX DMI telling you that no real trend is being had. And that's exactly what it should be when you are in the overall context of a consolidationary ish flag, which is what that is. Uh, 10 hour right over here, basically the same thing, basically the same fucking thing. Um, you do we have hidden bearish divergence? No, we do not. Uh, let's go over here to the daily. Uh, what does the daily say? Yeah, daily gave a little bit of a scare above the exponential right over here, but being shoved right back down. Again, you know, it's, again, pay attention. You know, we need to wait for confirmation on these sorts of things. We actually have taken out the, have we taken out the low of yesterday's daily? No, we have not. That's at 34.14. So Bitcoin's actually got plenty of work to do if it wants to actually take that area out. Um, daily Stokes did cross the upside, by the way, and rejection the more critical zone right over here. So that is significant to me. That is quite that is quite interesting. Uh, what about the two day? Did we uh, did did we get a new two day? No, we did not. Or did we? No, we did not. Yeah, and they actually they actually averted across the upside. So again, I put more weight on this, especially during weekend markets. Uh, we uh, two day jewel actually just cross below the sl the super slow right over here uh, that's not necessarily a sell signal but again look at the two day you know just another test of the 21 or sorry the 10 simple you know here's your test right over here here's your test right over here just basically getting weaker and you see and you can actually make a relation on how weak price action is in relation to how you know how close it's getting to these areas before it gets rejected again so again overall you know everything's bearish about the uh, exponentials and simples on the higher time frames so we got the two-day deal with death cross uh, that happened over here in in uh, early september and that was the impetus for taking this position right over here when all of the price action got ground down below it um, and now we are once, once again, below all major movement averages, uh, two day RSI never even got to test the exponential on that, on that last run. Again, the hidden bearish divergence between this point and this point still likely to play out and, uh, bring this baby down back down around to that area. Typically, typically is what happened. Not, not always. Uh, did we get a new three day? Um, I think we did. Yeah, we did get in. That's what we got. That's what we got new on. So, so three day, uh, three day deal death, death cross right over here. Not perfect by any means. And that's why we're kind of getting more of a consolidation in this area. Um, but as we are shuffled back below all major movement averages and really struggling around this area, you do see your three day stokes, you know, still cross down again. Anytime that it's actually crossed, like on the actual cross, that actually does call major, major dumps. Um, but this guy, we have not seen a major dump just yet. This this guy was a break of 6,000 in November. You know, this area right over here, you probably remember that. Then we had a cross right over here. Then we had a cross right over here. Then we had a cross right over here. Um, <clears throat> exponential on this guy, just testing it yesterday and reject so far. Uh, what about the jewel? Is it What is a jewel telling us? Jewel is actually going to be using this as support. So the jewel says, hold your horses. Um, and that's also why I I, I am a little bit hesitant on timing of this, and that's why I don't trade time. I don't think that you can really trade time. I can just 
suggest things that you know suggest suggest that a move isn't coming soon but i don't care until price action actually happens which is the most important fucking thing jesus christ man um <laughs> i just don't understand how people think that you can you know time analysis is not something real in my opinion uh, it's, it's something, it's something to mentally masturbate about, but not essentially really care too much about. We have the four day little death cross happening for the second time in Bitcoin's history right over here. Um, first time was in, was in 2014, ADX DMI actually strengthening a little bit. Uh, DMI minus is dominant for four day stokes are across the downside. Again, you do see it getting rejected from getting out of the bearish control zone right over here, which is exactly where it, was, where it got stuck in be, during the consolidation of 6,000. So what does that tell us again? Whether this breaks now or, or, or later, this is right now to be considered a bearish consolidation in confluence with the volume structure, in, in, in confluence with the price structure. I mean, all these sorts of things are <laughs> not necessarily signaling the most bullish uh, suggestions of all time. Uh, weekly over here, we are still opening and closing weekly doles below the purple 200 exponential. So you know what I'm about to say about that. Uh, again, this does not look like a low at all whatsoever to me. And, uh, you know, we're going to go over that. We're going to start to get into the long term analysis uh, pretty damn soon. Um, but uh, but basically, as long as Bitcoin is both opening and closing weekly doles below this purple 200 exponential, I don't see any reason to be to, to be considering that the lows are in. This does not look like a low. Again, I won't go over too much detail on this one, but basically the time span at the low was too long. Typically speaking, the percentage bounce off the low was too long or sorry, was too low. And the um, and also, you know, the the uh, as we saw the historical volatility rank not really giving us a signature of a low. The MET signal, which we'll go over soon, not really giving us a low. And I think I'm forgetting one as well. Um, and well, well we'll get to it later i'm sure it'll come up soon um but yeah overall as long as we are essentially opening closing weekly dose below that i'm going to run with that assumption given that i don't really see anything else that i'm essentially looking for by the same token we are resting right now on the 200 simple movement average right and i really don't like being short coming into an area like this so that's why i don't have a, like a big position on right now and i do consider this this last wick down during this past week's action an actual test of the 200 simple um, right around 3300 it was about 22 dollars shy of it formally getting there but that's close enough in my opinion so when i look at this and i, I what i think to myself is is that yeah if bitcoin does end down here without breaking it, it it's it's a hard trade to take i don't like taking that trade is what i'm trying to say um and again this is why i need to see price action confirm if i'm going to take a big short to the downside i want to see the weekly total close below the 200 simple again it's the <laughs> um so i hope that that's loud and clear uh, until then it's just time to play support and resistance in, in the way that uh, in the way that i've been showing the last few days just scalping here and there no positions really been held all that long except for again the position from 6300 so yeah weekly right over here we have all major movement averages migrating below 6000 so that's going to put a lot of pressure on price action that's not good uh, that is your traditional area of looking at and uh let's before we get into like the super or let's let's actually go over here let's do something new uh i'm going to bring up the crypto fear and greed index kind of an interesting thing to look at um and we are actually taking on extreme fear now this in and of itself is not enough but it would suggest to me that we're that that is a little bit less likely that we break down like now or today or, or like this week or, or anything like that um if we go over here to its actual how it's actually performed in the past it's not necessarily so good or sorry when it gets super low it doesn't necessarily mean that bitcoin hasn't dumped before in fact it has been pretty damn low before like right here on this september read where bitcoin quite literally went from you know the 7400 to six thousand in the span of a day um so it doesn't it doesn't you know get it doesn't get it perfectly but when it does get pretty damn high those actually do call tops really really well and you actually do see a trend line going from here to here or if you're autistic like me and your eyes just always see trend lines on shit well that's kind of what i see um by the same token the lows they sometimes say that it's a good some they sometimes get it right with 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 being a good time to buy but um it's 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 a lot less certain so i'm looking at a few there there's a few examples right over here the early um september late august you had uh this guy right over here i believe the the basically the dump from ten thousand uh down around there it, it stayed low for quite some time while bitcoin just kept on dumping uh you have i mean 
in in November December it was it was dumping pretty hard and we're we're staying pretty damn low around here as well so again a lot of things not necessarily um, but it is interesting to look at and it would be saying hey hold your horses before getting too excited about a position over here now on top of that I want to offer up some other things. So, uh, so all the fucking fractalers, all the Hadrian Reeves of the world, they are they are looking at this and say, "Fractal, we have. Have you seen this area over here?" Sorry, <laughs> terribly fucking racist. Uh, <laughs> I'm not fucking racist. If you need if you need me to tell you that, man, you you're in the wrong place to begin with, man. <laughs> I can't be spending time trying to explain that kind of a shit. You you should know that. Um, but uh, but this area right over here is what the fractalers are trying to tell you that this area over here is the same to this area right over here, and so that means that we have to go pump up and put in another another slightly higher high which i'm going to actually suggest that this is and i'm going to and i'm going to show why i believe that fractals are incredibly misleading why so many people get them wrong and why they're very difficult to actually trade if you're going to be an actual fractal practitioner of whatever the fuck that is fractaler which it, again it's very dubious because at some point in time it will be right it will actually get it right but you'll might you might have to try that position a hundred fucking times beforehand or it's just or you don't even because how do you how do you even manage risk on it and i mean yeah how do you manage risk on a fucking fractal i mean it's just ridiculous man just absolutely ridiculous but um you know, again, if you know someone who's made tens of millions of dollars and they have it in the bank, they can verify that and they've only traded fractals, I'm all ears and I'd love to learn from them. Until that happens, I'm going to go with what um, with what I've seen to work. Uh, anyways, right over here, this area, very, 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 very similar to this area right over here in nature, but not by fractal. Uh, first, thing, first things first, you know, you look at the volume on this guy right over here. It's very, very similar to the volume of this guy right over here in relation to your parabolic cycle right over here, just like this guy right over here in relation to your parabolic cycle right over here. Again, when we're actually talking about real capitulation, I want to see volume similar to this guy right over here, kind of like what you had right over here. That was the other, that was the third and final. That sorry, that was the fifth final missing piece on why I don't believe that this was the low is the volume. You know, I want to see volume like this taking up here. And remember, this is dubiously. Uh, this guy is dubiously high because these are measured in, in coins traded, not dollars traded. So when Bitcoin is literally you know over ten thousand right over here and three and a half thousand right over here. It's this, the volume is literally like less than half, more than way more than less than half over here if you measured in dollars. Anyways, um, so the volume, uh, so 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 the volume on this guy very similar to this, uh, very similar relation to this guy right over here in uh, into this area right over here is what I'm trying to say. Also, you you had a descending triangle right over here leading into the breakdown. That was a nice what like 52 and a half, 53 percent drop uh, drop down. You had the same sort of descending triangle right over here. You drop down, get your blood eagle on, and what 52 and a half, 52 and a half percent drop drop down as well then you pump back up again and what is that oh about a 25 percent pump up and then you pump back up right over here and that's about a whoops uh let's get it right about a 25 percent pump up as well over the course of and this is where i don't like to do this kind of shit because i do believe that this market cycle is taking longer so this is kind of irrelevant but this took about one two three four about six weeks each and every one of these dildos is a week, right? Um, if we go over here, you have about the same time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, a little bit longer, actually. Um, so over the course of a couple months, this one taking a little bit longer. Now, that's very interesting. Now, let's also bring up, again, I want to bring up something that is external to what we typically look at in the price, volume, and time indicators. I'm going to bring up the MVT signal, which the MVT signal is unrelated to those sorts of a thing it is it is a network value divided divided by the daily transaction value again just to kind of reiterate right why this was unlikely to be the low we did not we did not get anywhere near the bottoming area that this thing typically puts in bottoms at you know i want to see a green flash below the at least the 50 marker right over here like you got it right over here you got it right over here those, these were major market lows not necessarily the full-on market cycle like forever of course like no, like no shit on this guy right over here but this was what capitulation actually does look and feel like which we'll get Get back to later so just remember that put that in the back of your mind right over here that um that that green area kind of being flashed uh did have did have basically a nice you know move of about a hundred percent and that's again you know the way that bitcoin seems to play out it's you know major moves it has incredibly violent swings not a 25 percent move over the span of six weeks but a hundred percent move over the span of about a week and really like 50 percent of that being done within the span of almost a day um so anyways getting back onto the uh, onto the mvt signal, MVT signal right over here let's see where this guy was Sorry, did I mention that it's a network value divided, divided by the daily transaction value? Okay, so, <laughs> which is important because remember, it's not related to price, volume, and time, which is all the other indicators that we look at. So when I look at this guy right over here, this area right over here, and I see the same sort of a thing on the MVT signal as I see in 2018, where basically, God, you motherfucker. Oh, you bastard. 
Okay, so, you know, bring it up right over here. And where are we oscillating around? Well, we're basically straddling this 90 area right over here, right? And we are now, and once it got below the, the moving average right over here, that was, you know, that was breakdown time essentially. Well, if we go over into 2018, you get about the same thing, right? This is 2018 now, and we are once again wrangled by the moving average, uh, so it does feel like pressure is on. But wait, there's more. We are literally in the same area. Again, that's kind of the big news on that. That's that's why that's quite interesting to me. Let's just go back to where, where were we talking about? Oh, it's right there. You, obviously, you can just look at it, but but basically, let's look at the price action first. So, so the reason why people are thinking that Bitcoin goes to like 3,900, 4,000, 4,400, whatever it be, whatever it is, which I suppose is possible, but it's not certainly not the thing that I'm leaning towards, and I don't really see too many other things pointing. And I don't really see anything pointing that direction. To be quite, to be quite frank, um, to be quite frank, that's like an old saying. Uh, but, but basically, it's because people say, okay, so you came down over here, all right, fractal up, then fractal down, then fractal higher high, and then fractal down, 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 fractal, fractal, fractal. It's like, all right, great. Um, and you actually do have that same sort of a scenario on your MVT signal right over here. You come down, you pop up, pop back down to your lows, and then put in a higher high. Interesting. Well, let's see what we've done in 2018. Uh, sorry, in 2019. I keep on getting that wrong, man. I'm, I'm living in the past. Uh, <laughs> I need to live in the present. There's no moment like the future, there's, or there's no time like now. Uh, and we obviously did not put in a higher high right over here. We put in a slightly lower high, just by about 100 bucks or so. But looking at the MVT signal right over here, Look at this, pop all the way down, uh, jump up, pop back down to the lows, and then put in a higher high on the MVT signal right over here, and then pop back down, and now we are, are we above or below the, uh, the, the moving average? We are technically below it right now. So we're kind of like wrestling around with it, but as you can see, as this bear market slowly, slowly but surely gets walked down, uh, I am certainly leaning that direction. So again, looking at these sorts of things do does matter, does matter quite a bit to me. Um, Especially as an external form, uh, source of an, uh, an external uh, source to get, you know, information from. It's again, it's not related to price volume and time as all the other indicators are. So to have that sort of a signature is very enlightening into what we're actually doing uh, during this phase of the market cycle. Um, okay, cool. So we covered that. We covered that. Now let's go back into the lower time frames one, for for one second. And now I'm again running with the assumption that this is not the low. We will be moving lower, which I strongly believe. I strongly believe again the timing of this highly variable, highly fucking variable. Um, that is the big, you know that uh, that is a big thing. I need to see that. I need to see the 200 simple moving average on the weekly get broken or 32.50 on a daily get broken. But going back on over here, you know, and, and running with the assumption that we are basically filling out a ascending triangle. Well, we can make a measure move off this baby, right? We can make a measure move. And if that does, again, if it does get initiated, where do I look down towards? Where do I look down towards? Well, I look down towards this area right over here, 2400, as that is the measure move on this baby. Also I'm lining up with some nice uh, with some nice areas right over here. And if we go back to that bit stamp chart, and we put it on a weekly as I lose my voice. <laughs> um, you can see that that actually does is met by by plenty of other things. So not only is it the measurement, but it's also this blue box territory right over here encompassed by about 2300 to 2600 as things are typically an area, not just like a singular line, which is also the 886 Fibonacci retracement down around here, which is actually where Bitcoin did bottom out in 28 and 2014 right over here. Nice spike low to the 886, by the way. That's the last line of defense for this current um, this current uh, consolidation, in my opinion, um, uh, basically where the where the 200 simple is. Uh, then we also have some nice historical horizontal trend lines coming around this area. It looks better on a daily. We also have some major volume profile coming around on this area as well, with a major thick node in the 2600 area. We are basically hanging on to the last high value node of uh, of the 3000s. And look at this, there ain't nothing doing all the way from from basically 32 to to mid 2000s, just like you had over here at 6000 all the way down to the to basically high 3000s essentially. So again, um, this is very important because if the move does happen, it's gonna you know it's likely to be pretty damn fast. Uh, as you can see, the actual the highest value notes on this chart are all the way down around here, one around 1000. Do am I necessarily saying that that Bitcoin is gonna go to 1100? Nope, I think it's that I think it's certainly possible. But in the way that I look at it, I'm always gonna look at you know areas beforehand as potential. Er uh, sorry, I'm gonna look at potential reversal areas beforehand and give those their due diligence because understand that major market cycle bottoms are put in you know essentially by an by an entity with extremely deep pockets you know billion billion dollars plus and so their whole perspective what they're thinking is they want to accumulate as much as possible for as little as possible because as soon as they get in they will be leaving a massive fucking wake which anyone with eyes can see essentially um you're still going to have your perma bears telling you that this thing's going to join to zero of course and i am a long-term believer in bitcoin so i do want to distance myself from that but um 
you know, when that happens, they know that they're not going to be getting anywhere near that price again. So, so their goal is to buy as much as possible. So they need to do it in an area that, you know, mostly people are not really aware of or not really thinking of. So you can do all the, all the technical analysis you want in this area right over here. It doesn't matter. Uh, I'm really looking for a signature. I'm looking for, I'm looking for an overall signature, which we'll discuss a little bit later. Or I'm, we've, well, we've kind of alluded to it already, actually. Um, but basically this next area right over here of extreme importance to me, it also does match up with the BLX index right over here, the three, seven, seven exponential coming in right around 2,600. And if we do go into the monthly, which, which I want to, which I want to spend some time talking about as well, we do have the nice 89 exponential coming in right around that area, right around 2450, 2500 ish area as well, which is incredibly important to me right now because we have, we have closed our first monthly dollar below the green 55 exponential for the first time in Bitcoin's history ever. Now, again, that's a testament to really to how young Bitcoin is, but where's the next target going to be just going from that? Typically right around here. Um, and looking at this guy, you know, you really don't see too much holding it up from there right now as it stands. But the question to me is, is that do we do we make another try, another test of the 55 first, which would which is all the way uh, right around 3650, which would align with a test of the upper resistance of the descending triangle that we're in? It's certainly possible. It's very possible. Um, and that's why I also don't believe that it's appropriate to be like directional short right now. <laughs> Again, <it's, laughs> hope that these things come come through clear. And in fact, I, I, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure that the that the average person listening to this does does really understand this because the because the because the typical messages that, that I get are very, 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 very encouraging, and really fucking cool to get, actually. Um, but uh, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you know, the 55 right over here, you know, as long as we're living below that, as long as we're closing monthly dollars below that, I'm very fucking bearish, um, you know, looking for a big move to the downside. But again, this is a monthly. It can take a long time to happen. It's, it, it takes literally one month to just put in one of these baby dildos over here. Uh, monthly Stokes still headed down as well, not even losing any momentum. Monthly ADX DMI, not telling you shit. Uh, monthly RSI, the lowest it's ever been in Bitcoin's history, although it hasn't necessarily got there on the weekly. Um so yeah, you know, looking at this area right over here, it does kind of make sense. Now, that is all very well and interesting. And again, does that does that guarantee that that area is going to be the ultimate low for Bitcoin for forever? No, of course. Like I said, I need to see the reaction. If that area fails, if I don't like the reaction, just like I didn't like the reaction right over here, which we could, which we knew after after two weeks, um, <clears throat> then I'd be looking towards eighteen sixty nine right over here. And if that area fails, then then yes, then I join the super bears down around one thousand area, low one thousands. So that's essentially what I'm thinking. Um, we can go through the matrix right here and actually come up with some ideas again going off of uh, going off of what we just spoke on on the actual timing of this not something that I believe too much in but going off of you know this the historical volatility rank on the lower time frames and also the volume interest of this and also the volume profile there is some interesting things right over here so each and every one of these dotted trend lines represents a a support trend line for a parabolic market cycle each and every one in, in uh, bitcoin's history so you have this first one over here 2010 2011 gets broken in 2012 that becomes the highest of your parabolic market cycle in 2013 and 2014 right over here then you create another support trend line for this next parabolic parabolic market cycle right over here right over here and that gets sorry and that uh, in 2012 and 2013 that gets broken in 2015 right over here and that becomes the highs of your 2017 2018 2019 market cycle right over here then we create another support trend line for this past one uh right over here right over here and that gets broken right over here at uh on, on that massive down below five thousand. does that become our governing factor going uh, up and up up and away uh in the future well again uh this is how this is pretty speculative but uh, and three three times makes it makes a trend not necessarily two but at the end of the year that would suggest a potential high and again this is just a governing factor it doesn't i mean it doesn't necessarily guarantee it doesn't say that it's going to get there but it, it's just a high right around fourteen thousand. i don't think bitcoin's getting back above six thousand this year to be honest with you uh in 20 in 2021 um bitcoin you know the the potential high could be all the way at almost forty thousand. okay so things are starting to really rapidly change what about in 2022 or sorry beginning of 2022 you know right over here it starts to get up to like ninety thousand, a hundred thousand. so you can see that it rises pretty damn rapidly but at the same point in time you know for the people who think that this thing is just going to reverse like in v bottom out of here going back to twenty thousand tomorrow extremely unlikely uh, extremely unlikely when you have all these major movement averages also migrating below the six thousand level as well i mean that's you know good fucking luck man that's a lot to chew through um now you also notice these solid dot these solid trend lines right over here right over these first ones right over here right over here these are related to each other this guy right over here and this guy right over here once again because they hold in the consolidation after the parabolic blow off top and then 
basically, well, we'll just look at it and, and basically lead into your bull trap. So you have this guy right over here. Remember, going, we, we can also verify this on the MBT signal that this was, you know, you know, you put in your top, you put in your bottom, and then you put in a, a bull trap right over here. So once you break out of this trend line, it actually becomes the lows of, you know, it, it governs your lows going forward. So you bounce off it right over here, and then you bounce off it right over here, putting your ultimate low on the 886. Well, we actually have a very similar thing right over here. You know, this solid dotted trend line, you break out of it right over here. Remember, we flashed a lot of red on the MBT signal, which, we, which we'll probably go back to in a second as well. Um, and uh, pop all the way down to town down to this area right over here. We based off this guy once. Now this is actually what held it up. And do we bounce off of it again, or can we just or can we just look at it where it would kind of meet some of those price targets that we looked at? Um, so if we were to look at that that uh, that that two thousand that that mid two thousands area right over here, where would that be suggesting? That'd be suggesting well, quite literally, you know the. <laughs> Uh, it looks like early, early to middle of February, or sorry, sometime in middle February, give or take a little bit. Um, if we move down a little bit lower to the 1800s, then, then yeah, then April, May, if we move all the way down to a thousand, then, then early or sorry, late May, June, something like that would, would suggest a low down around here. So again, um, is that a done deal? No, not necessarily, but it did happen in 2014, 2015 mark cycle. And it actually did happen in the past ones before that as well, though. I don't really necessarily want to go over them right now. Um, so yeah, let's go back on over to Mr. Bitcoin right over here, right over here. What time is it? It's 10 already. Holy shit, man. Time is flying already. Um, let's see. Okay. So what, what else do we want to talk about? We talked about targets. We talked about that. We talked about that. Um, what else can we talk about? Uh, let's see. Yeah. Okay. So what am I looking for on a low? Well, uh, well, going back, let's actually go over a few examples on what a real market cycle low looks like. So on a real market cycle low, let's just, well, let's just bring out the last one that we really had right over here. And again, this was a very violent form of capitulation, but capitulation is all about emotions. It's all about the emotion of despair, of hopelessness. And that's what caused people to let go of their cones. Cause they, you know, they quite literally don't have any more hope. Um, now it can come from this very, you know, aggressive downtrend or can or can shake people out you know and cause that same emotion by going sideways for an extremely long period of time like think five ten years you know if, if that if that statement uh perturbs you then perhaps you are the kind of person who might be shaken out by such things although i don't think that that's going to happen to be quite honest um i do want to bring up this guy right over here and then we're also going to bring up the historical volatility rank as well let's see get everything going right now i'm actually going to turn these guys off off off. Okay, cool. All right, so uh, so so let's just go analyze what what uh, what a market cycle low typically looks like. Well, first things first, I want to see I want to see green. You motherfucker! How dare you? I want to see green on this guy. I want to see a read below the fifty at at the very least on the MBT oscillator. As you can see, again, right now we are nowhere near that. I mean, we're actually not nowhere near that. We're kind of right in the middle, around ninety-ish. Um, <clears throat> but you flash it right over here, and you actually flashed on the ultimate low, right? Or sorry, uh, before the turnaround, right over here as well. Uh, before you know, before that three-year uh, bull trend. Uh, also on the MBT signal, on the daily, at least on the daily, I want to see this thing get all the way up to the one area. Again, the MBT, or sorry, not the MBT signal, the historical volatility rank. Sorry, sorry, sorry bad slip of the tongue, but I want to see a major read on the historical volatility rank right over here. I also want to see volume like this. Let's just take everything away. I want to see volume like this in relation to your parabolic cycle right over here, like this. I want to see them like, they don't have to be exactly the same, but they need to be similar. Then also, again, remember, keep in mind, this is a, these are daily dildos and within one day of price action, this thing bounced up like almost 40%. That's literally more, that's, that's significantly more than we bounced up in, in it, given six weeks of price action right over here. I mean, this is, again, this is about 25% over the course. And that took, you know, three, four weeks to really work off of, uh, Whereas over here, I mean, we're talking about literally in one day and most of that done in the, in the span of a couple hours. You also notice that the time spent at the low is extremely, extremely small. I mean, the, this, this wick down right around here was really just over the course of about an hour or two. Um, <clears throat> and it doesn't return to that area anytime soon within like, you know, w within a, within a legitimate perspective of that. In fact, 
price action kind of maintains an equilibrium. Yeah, about 12, it, it tested about 12 and a half percent above that, but that's, you know, that's nowhere fucking near. And then after that, basically a floor is put in 40% higher. So again, 40, 40 and a half percent higher, significantly higher. And that's what I mean by a major, major player, major institutional, institutional player, whatever it is, whoever has extremely deep pockets to put in a floor. And then, you know, that's kind of what happens. That's how, that's why they know that they have to accumulate as much as possible in this area right over here, because this is likely to happen. So again, going over to this area right over here, you know, we don't have the, we don't have anywhere near the top of the volatility rank. We are in the 90 area on the MBT, not not below 50. And overall, the volume on this guy very lackluster. The percentage bounce extremely anemic, getting rolled over, just not getting the signals that you want to see. Um, weekly read right over here just looks it looks like it's being governed by the 10 simple. I would say that this thing is more likely to I think that it's more likely to break to the downside before before moving back above 4,000. Uh, and again, going off of the monthly as well. I think that's I think that's significantly more likely. Um, but again, you know, what am I waiting for? On I, opinion aside, these are all opinion things. My opinion it does not matter. I do not trade my opinion. I trade technical analysis, and technical analysis says you have a major support right around 3250. Until that actually breaks, you're still just consolidating. And during consolidation, you can play ping pong along this whole goddamn thing. Um, okay, let's go over and check out CME. CME is opening up later tonight. They closed at 34.35, but remember that actually was a high for CMEs, respectively speaking, because they are uh, they are trading at a discount. So that's actually a little bit uh, that's actually a little bit um, interesting because that would suggest that if we do, we actually probably do stay around here and don't see like a major breakdown before end of day. Which again, I'm not looking for a major breakdown or anything like that. But if you are looking to like trade the ranges, just understand that you know the the next kind of, kind of scalp create in my mind to make is is either do we close, you know, uh, or sorry, do the spot charts open below or above where the CMEs closed when they when they come up, and then that'll you know that that'll likely be the next do. Um, so yeah, uh, they open up, up at 6 p.m. Eastern time. GBDC, again, also kind of breaking down uh, its own formation, but perhaps making something new. I'm not necessarily getting the full on uh, reaction that I wanna see if, if, a, if a major pattern like this is breaking down. Uh, so that is a little bit off of left center. Let's go check out Mr. Buterall, Mrs. Buterall, Mr. Buttersworth over here. <laughs> just evolves more and more and more mr buttersworth he's been such a good butler over here being held by the by the 21 on the on the uh on the 12 hour um again same sort of a thing as long as you're below 117 ish area the breakdown off this descending triangle right over here that we were looking at for quite some time you know i'm, I'm overall bearish um <clears throat> doesn't mean it can't get above but if it does get above then then probably a run back at least to 126 maybe 135 uh by the same token i'd say that you know, if, if it does break below this, this current low at 105, the next area that I'd be looking towards is around 93 and a half ish area. Uh, overall, weekly on this guy, pretty nasty as well. Uh, really nasty as well, actually. As long as you're below the 10 simple around 120, it's it's not too nice. Not too nice. Again, I've seen crazier things happen, no doubt about that, but needs to do some work in order to, to make me a believer. Uh, Mrs. Litecoin right over here. Mrs. Litecoin actually turned in the corner. She's doing something different. Uh, Mrs. Litecoin is doing something different than the, than, the, than the regular markets. I mean, typically speaking, you don't see things like really operate and do something really different. But as you can see, the range still has not changed. The range still has still not changed. I've not touched a single fucking uh, trend line on this thing in probably weeks. You have this 34 and a half uh, cent uh, resistance right over here. As long as you're below that, it's just consolidation. You have this 30 support right over here. As long as you're above that, just consolidation. However, I would imagine that if Bitcoin or Miss Buterall broke down, probably Mrs. Litecoin follows. Mr. Butter, Buzz, Buttersworth is looking uh, a little bit more sick, to be honest. Um, should we go check out Mr. Ripples? Uh, Mr. Ripples, again, same sort of a thing. Pay attention to the higher time frames. Three day is confirmed as a rejection of the 21, any below the 10 simple. Not looking good. Uh, whoops, let's get, let's get rid of these guys right over here. Right over here. By the way, MBT signal didn't even signal a... Uh, Nice down on that. Uh, ADX EMI actually strengthening a little bit, but still no dominant trend. Mm, three day Stokes actually crossing up, so fair enough. Uh, yeah, I, again, I, I don't want to be bearish until this guy down around here breaks. That's more that's a more traditional way of doing it, you know. And, and there is something to be said about Bitcoin, like perhaps getting back down to its former lows and then bouncing off that. 
um, very, you know, very, very possible. I mean, th this could, this could very easily be another hunt down around 3250 and, and pop back up something like that. But again, I think that's going to do it for the majority of this stream. Uh, let's go over here to the, to the longs and shorts. This is also very concerning. We have about 32,000 open longs versus 24 and a half thousand open shorts. So, we've, so we've been steadily losing shorts. We have, uh, two and a half thousand of those, or sorry, 3000 of those hedge with, so really uh, under 22,000 open shorts, um, versus 32,000 open longs. Essentially that is a significant imbalance. With the longs paying, you know, not point not three six, not super high, but definitely not no low. Whereas the shorts are not even paying. It looks like that's interesting as well. So again, that typically lines up with some nasty dumps as well when when those get really imbalanced. That's also a big indicator of, on why the low is not in. You want to see those opposite essentially. I want to see those guys completely opposite uh, right over here on the on the. Uh, on the shorts chart, anytime that the shorts get down around to this low 20,000s, which we did take on not too long ago, it does match up with some nasty dumps. You had this, this was to break 6,000. This was a dump from 8,000 to 6,000 span of a couple of days or, or sorry, a week. This was, this was your dump of 10,000 to seven, sorry, to 6,000 right over here. I mean, it's, it's not necessarily the best read. Uh, so yeah, let's go, let's go to lower time frames and wrap this bitch up. Uh, lower time frame. This does look like we are in the context of a rising channel bear flag. Doesn't mean it's always going to break out to the bottom, but more likely, uh, if it does break above 3480, I would not want to be short. If it does break above 3530, then perhaps I might even consider a long, as I think that you'd probably get another run up into this area, 3700-ish area, give or take a few, uh, give or take a few bucks. By the same token, if it breaks down below uh, 3400, or sorry, 30, uh, yeah, about 3400, 30, 3369, more, more uh, conservatively speaking, then, then yes, the next measure move would be down here to 3250, also filling this measure move right over here. But again, does that mean that Bitcoin's like destined to fall onto new lows from there? Not necessarily just yet. It needs to actually formally close close a weekly below the 200 simple or daily below 3250 whichever one happens first then i'll be then i'll be comfortable taking a little bit of a position and again just a position just a risk reward trade so that's it for this morning i hope this one finds you well i hope that i hope that this uh, sunday is going beautifully for you i hope that go jesus gets all the praise that he deserves on this on his uh, birthday today hope everyone's having a beautiful birthday as well i'll be back on later with some more uh no i won't be back on later with some with some live stream action let's say it's like some major move or something like that uh i'll be back on tomorrow with some more video analysis and a live stream tomorrow as uh, I like to, I like to have my weekends be a little bit more on the chill side. So, again, wishing you well over here. From uh, of, oh my god, it's 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 literally just a, a sheet of white outside my window right now. It's insane. Uh, so again, wishing you well. Hope you're staying warm and uh, look forward to seeing you soon. Take care.